great. My pants are wet. I'm gonna be late for the show again. Oh, oh, fire, fire, help, oh, no. help, Not fire, again. help, help. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Junkyard Wars and the semifinals. Today, our two red hot teams face off in a wacky water war, and they will be feeling the heat in this infernal challenge. Today's sizzling assignment is to build a firefighting boat. It must carry all four team members across this lake to tackle a fire raging in our tool shed. The boats will be moored 30 feet in front of the sheds. When the fire's out, they must retrieve a pair of bolt cutters from the embers, carry them in their boat back to the start point and use them to cut open a chest. The first to break in will be the winners. In red are three brain boxes from Boston, MIT masterminds The Geeks. We're The Geeks! My name's Thomas. My name is Rhett Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Coops. Rhett is the physics major, so we're not quite certain if he's going to say anything practical. I have all the theoretical experience. I'm not sure what good that's going to do us in a junkyard. Thomas has all the practical experience. He's the master of KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. We're going to go all the way, baby. The geeks will prevail. We're going to destroy them! <laughs> In the first round, they built a stealthy dirt buggy. Its high-tech aluminium sail blew them into today's semi-final. To bolster the geek's brain power is pump peddler Kirk Moyes. He sells wacky pumps, like the ones that squirt cream into Twinkies and ones that pump poop around the International Space Station. So he means business. Aiming to sink the geeks in Killer Bee Yellow are the pit crew, three mean-looking mechanics with a sting in their tails. We're the pit crew! Hoorah! We're here to kick a little ass. My name is Frank and I'm the captain. My name is Tim. I'm Scott. We service all the emergency vehicles for Arlington County. Tim is an all-around 360-degree guy, Scott. He is a junkyard dog by himself. Frank ain't weld anything but a broken heart and straighten anything but a crooked woman. The pit crew is coming to town, guys. So look out. I think we can pull it off. Who let the junkyard dogs out? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> In the first round, these heavyweight hombres built a hill climbing vehicle that knocked out the jet jocks and beat a path to today's semis. <laughs> to beef up the pit crew's know-how is pump engineer Mike Ruthie. Mike builds firefighting pumps and water cannons for riot control vehicles, but can he control the pit crew? Okay, guys, let's go. All right, all right. right. Let's go, geeks! Ugh. All right, teams, gather around here. Conquering pit crew. Yeah! Victorious geeks. Yeah! Teams, welcome back, and congratulations on making it through to the Junkyard Wars semifinals. Your challenge today is to open this treasure chest. To do it, you're gonna need these bolt cutters. Sounds simple, but these are gonna be in a burning tool shed on an island in the middle of a lake. Your challenge is to build the fastest, finest, <laughs> most ferocious firefighting ship ever. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Okay, you're pros at this now, so you know you've only got 10 hours from when the gong are gongs. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> We're building a fireboat, man. I assume we're going to need a pump and we're going to need a boat. What, how do these things work? Ideally, we'll have some sort of a catamaran. And we want a stable platform. We want it fairly swift through the water and fairly lightweight. The most effective way to develop pressure is with the positive displacement pump. So we need to find some sort of device, such as an engine block or something, to use as the actual pump itself. I would expect that we're going to end up taking an engine and building new heads, finding some valves. What? Expert Kirk's outlandish idea is to turn a car engine into a displacement pump. Each cylinder inside the engine will work like a mini pump. Pull down the piston and it fills with water. Push it up and water spurts out the end. Connect the cylinders together and you have a powerful jet of water. The pump will be chain driven by a motorbike and both will be mounted on a catamaran big enough to carry four skinny geeks across the lake. Typical fire hose is effective from 20 to 35 feet away. Okay. A normal man can handle an inch and a half hose. But what about a geek? 
How's what is this fire boat about? Why don't you give us an idea? Naturally, we're going to have to have a boat big enough to hold all of us, right. hold all the equipment. The engine's going to drive the pump. I'm thinking a centrifugal pump. Cool. Um, Great. With vanes. A centrifugal pump works a bit like a spin dryer. They need to find a set of fan blades, mount them on a disc, and enclose the assembly in a metal housing. Water will be sucked in at the center, and the spinning disc will fling it to the sides, shooting it out through a nozzle. The team plan to build it from scratch and power it with a beefy motorbike. They also need a hull that will carry everything, including four bulky blokes. To make the pump itself, we're going to need a whole bunch of metal discs and tubes and everything uh, else. Right. But where we really have to start is with this engine. So like motorcycle, like motorcycle. motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, great idea. All right, guys, daylight's burning. We've got very little time. Here's the shopping list. We need a hull, something that's long and floats. We need a pump. We need the almighty power source, maybe a motorcycle. You got that? The engine and what we're going to use for a boat is probably our first order of business. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Hit him. All right. You guys are out of here. So the teams are pumped up and the heat is on. It's brain power versus brute force in the race for junk. So Kathy, yeah. what do you do when you see a fireman? I don't know, Tyler, what do you do when you see a fireman? You put it out, man! <laughs> the winner of today's Titanic duel will go through to the Junkyard Wars finals. So the pressure is on the scavengers to weed out and find the best bits of junk. Space Cadet Rhett is going warp speed. That's ATV, dude. The pint-sized professor is bagging all the booty. I found a chassis over here. It looks like something that might have been run. It's butchered. I mean, there's no front forks and no rear on it. It's already cut down. <laughs> oh, man! The wrench heads have only found bits of bike, but the cone heads have a complete chopper. This is our best choice so far, but the, I want to look some more. I want to look some more. Yeah! Roll it. <laughs> Always wanted to do this. Never mind. Dudes, I see another motorcycle that looks in really good condition. Both teams are after the same bikes, and in this game, it's finders keepers. I've seen some pieces when we were walking by. There's got to be something out here. And losers weepers. If the other team can get it out, I guess it's theirs. What do you mean if the other team can take it out? What are you talking about? Well, they're standing on top of it. It's okay. Hey, hang in there. Don't worry about it. Hang in there. The geeks show off their sexy bike. They kind of lucked out on that baby. I don't know where they got it from, but we got to find something here. Oh, dude. <laughs> we, well, we'll see what our expert thinks, because he's pontoon happy. What a find. This paddle boat should easily carry the mini masterminds across the lake. But their fire pump design is complicated, so there's more junk to scrounge. You know, I almost think we should make a clean sweep of the deck and, and, and knock off the superstructure. Hey, Capitan Geek, yeah. welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> it's looking. Well, I mean, you're going to have the most resplendent fireboat in the West if you're using this. And we have got the best scavengers of any team. <laughs> Rhett this is amazing. This is a choice find, isn't it? Yes. So what's the basic design, Kirk? Well, we're got, we need a reciprocating pump. We're looking for a small four-cylinder engine. Right. We calculate, you it's know, we be guess doing it, that it's business. going to be doing that, yeah, which in, hopefully in harmony so that it doesn't bounce us off the boat. Inside the car engine are four cylinders. Expert Kirk's plan is to turn each of these into a mini pump. When the piston moves down, it will suck water in. When it moves up, it will pump water out through a hose. For this to work, they'll have to modify the top part or head of the engine with pipes and valves. And they're going to use the motorbike to power it. Fella over here, but Captain right. Tom is skeptical. Yeah. Well, Kirk is real keen on a, a displacement pump, and he's the pump expert. Right. But I worked in an oil refinery, and I know <laughs> this is a pump too. 
but it's a centrifugal pump, I believe. You're not uh, keen on this, are you? I said. You know, I, there's an awful lot of work involved in that, and I don't know that we can create uh, turn that into a functional pump in 10 hours. So how are you going to come to a decision on this? Oh, you know, we'll just keep building the parts that we agree on until we get to this part. <laughs> Over the wall, the pit crew have a plan, but no parts. Well, you have nothing here except We have for nothing. We got two, two dodgy uh, looking uh, bike uh, motors. We could spend the rest of the day trying to get those to run. What about the pump system? Have you guys figured out what kind of a pump system you want to no, use? No, it'll be a centrifugal pump. Okay. Uh, you know, basically a disc with veins on it. The veins spin around in a housing and that throws the water out. Inside a centrifugal pump is an impeller that needs to spin over 3,000 times a minute. Water is sucked into the middle and spun to the edges where it's forced out of a hose. The practical pit crew plan to make it from scratch and mount it directly onto the sprocket of their motorbike when they find one. At least Captain Frank and expert Mike agree on the pump design. I think my Mike said it's a very good idea. It's practical, it's simple. And it's mm -hmm. nothing to do with a lot of critical pieces or anything like that, you know. Out in the yard, Coops is finding computer simulations aren't like driving the real thing. I'm high centered on a, the six wheeler. I need a hand pushing it back. All right, we're coming to help. But what's this? In violation of junkyard rules, captain and expert have left their workshop. Is anybody over here? No. No. And the prowling pit crew take advantage. <laughs> this one, this one is running. But this is daylight robbery. Nobody was frank. <laughs> they ran away, there was nobody over there. We back in business. <laughs> the geeks bounce their buggy free and head back to the shop. We've been robbed. We're the fudge. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, uh, hey, do you like don't it? Go. Go. Don't push the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to hey, squeeze it. Like it. You're not allowed in our attended build area. How about we work out a deal? Since you're the captain, we can negotiate something yes. here. You guys haven't done a whole heck of a good scrounging job. I don't oh, see a lot of hey, Captain, at the moment, we have the aces of the game here. Okay. Yeah, okay, you got one up on us. You gotta talk to the captain here. This is the captain here. We can work out a deal here. The oh, captains man. escape the mayhem to negotiate. Tom must face up to fast-talking Frank if he's to claw back anything. Fantastic. When you left the treasure open, it was an opportunity for us to capitalize on okay. it. Hopefully your man can understand that this is just a, this is warfare. <laughs> Yes, you guys are junkyard dogs. We're gonna give them the running bike. Pinch fist Frank gives them the slower motorbike and an unwanted Jeep engine. We're not paying for delivery. Hey guys, that was a great move. All it was right. fair. This is junkyard wars, you know. I don't know how fair it was, but it worked real well. It worked. We'll be ready for those for those yellow guys when they come back. Stunning turn of events. I have never seen the like. <laughs> it, was, it was truly brawn over brains on that it one. It was they East just... Coast. It was definitely a bit of East Coast muscle on that one, wasn't it? I never liked bullies when I was a kid, <laughs> and I don't like them now. I'm sticking with the geeks. Are you? It's Geek a power. Surprising. Really? Because the geeks are going to prove that crime doesn't pay. Let me just start the bike again, just to see that they didn't what the it. vandals... The key. Have... Where's the no. key? The key was in it. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, so, we might not have to negotiate I'll go, for the key. I'll go talk to him about that. Guys, it's another dirty trick by the neighbors there. from hell. But the key is now missing out of that motorbike. Ah. But I showed, you, I showed you how to hotwire this one. Give me the key, All right, what else do you have to trade? <laughs> yeah, no, no, come on, guys. <laughs> I, yeah, they were hiding it. Okay. Can you believe that? Well, all's fair in love and war, but this is a junkyard, and it's a little bit different story. <laughs> They stole our bicycle! Those jerk birds. The pit crew are reveling in their skullduggery. Oh yeah! Are you feeling a bit war torn over here? Yes, yes. Really? Yes. You think that was all, all fair and square? I think it was. Apparently when we were working in here, they had the whole crew out there helping. And when we looked over the other side, there was nobody there. And uh, they were bringing in pieces. They were bringing in pieces by four at a time. Have you heard but, the expression, yeah. two wrongs don't make a right, though? Uh, no, but I do agree, one eye for an eye for an eye. The geeks get the rusty Jeep engine that Tom bargained so hard for. Expert Kirk reckons it's perfect for his displacement pump. But Tom wants a closer look. Block. We might have to block off these manifolds because it's side ported valves. Whoa, wait, wait, we're, how, this is not what I was envisioning for a head. Kirk's design is under fire, and it's not only Tom who's skeptical. What distance is the fire away? We gotta shoot the water 20 to 30 feet away. 
because I think that the volume we're going to get out of that if we can perfect the pump design is going to be enough. I don't think so. No way, I want to count on that. The geeks aren't confident with their expert and his wacky design, but for now, they must put their differences aside and truck on. Can we, can we put that on the paper, on the board? All right, boss. I guess Landlubber so. Scott thinks he's found a boat hull. I found a orange pickup truck bed. With a tailgate on it and everything. Looks like we might be able to do something with it. I think I'm going to kiss you, buddy. That sounds like a winner there, buddy. Scott thinks this hunk of metal has ocean-going potential, and no one dares to disagree. We've got a little trimming to do on this, but... I think it'll work great. Which I Even if they can do. turn it into a Give boat, a it'll never compare to the genuine article. The most famous fireboat is the Firefighter of New York City, which had the power of 18 fire trucks and pumped 20,000 gallons a minute. By the 1930s, every major port had a fireboat to get to places where fire trucks couldn't reach. Today, the most high-tech, rapid-response fireboats are these rivercraft. They're the brainchild of boat designer John Phelan, who's joined us to judge this week's challenge. John, we got a spot in the throne with your name on it right here. Well, good morning, Tyler. So, John, what is a fireboat? What does it do? A fireboat is a vessel that can float and pump water and, and produce enough volume to take care of fires. Which of these two designs is actually the most efficient? That pump the Geeks is building is just way too complicated and heavy. There are many moving parts here and no one knows how many of those moving parts are good. The pit crew design is a proven and simple design. A centrifugal pump will likely be able to pump water when it gets there. At this point, it looks like the pit crew is ahead of the geeks. The ruffians are the front runners, and they strip down their hull with zest. Over at the funny farm, they still can't agree on the pump design, so they push on with what they can agree on. They need to cut a hole in their paddle boat to fit the bike. Captain Tom designs computer software, so he's the man for the job. A bit of hacking, followed by a reboot. Attention teams, attention teams. This is your six hour time check. You have six hours oh, remaining. Jeez, no problem. I like how, as they're developing, the machines are really playing to type. It seems that whenever the, the pit crew build anything, it's always big, beefy, brutish. Absolutely. We don't need no stinking brake. <laughs> It's it. kind of the same shape they are. I mean, I don't want to be rude about them or anything, but they are kind of all cast in the same sort of mold, aren't they? They're all sort of like straight up and down all the way from their head to their feet. <laughs> Scott was actually out in the junkyard looking for his neck <laughs> earlier. There were no other boat choices out there, huh? This is, this is what we're going to use. This is, this is we're really committed to this one. This is what we're going to use no matter what. The chunky crew aren't amused by their ugly boat. To do that. Now they've stripped it down, it's still too heavy, and they found a whole lot of problems. Uh, we got to clog up all the holes anyway. we got to plug up the holes first. I'm sure we're not going to get them all the first time. You know what will work really that? good? If we can find a sheet of styrofoam about yay thick, tuck it in behind this and glue it to the bottom. Give us a lot yeah. of points and give us a smooth thing. These ceiling tiles could save the day. Okay. That stuff weighs nothing, and we'll gain buoyancy like a big dog. It ain't pretty, but they hope it'll do the trick. There is a potential for the pit crew to actually sink oh, yes. this boat. Oh, yes. There's definitely a sinking hazard here. Where do, where do you put your money right now? Well, I'm certainly going to keep it away from the pit crew for right now. I guess we'll give it to the hydrodynamics and the smoothness of the geeks. They're going to get there first. If the pump works, they'll get the fire out. Right. The Geek's paddle boat is keeping them hot, but expert Kirk and his high-tech pump are out in the cold. I'm just very concerned about the current design. The, the part count is higher, the modes of failure are more numerous, because none of that changed since this morning when we decided to go with this. Mutiny is in the air. Are you happy? with the team, have they grasped the idea? I can promise you that when we, if we ever get it done, it's gonna be right. <laughs> Love the vote of confidence. I gotta tell you, if we ever get it done. The quarrelsome geek's plan to turn a Jeep engine into a pump is on a knife's edge. This looks like dessert over here, Frank. 
and the perspiring pit crew have a hole riddled pickup bed and no pump in sight. Oh man, we need this pump to work, Tom. Is Doubting Thomas thinks they won't get that old engine turning. We're burning time. Inside each cylinder, the piston is connected by a steel rod to the engine's crankshaft. The motorbike will rotate the crankshaft, turning the Jeep engine into a pump. The problem is the rusty pistons may have seized up, and the bike may not have enough power to turn the crank, which would mean disaster. If Captain Tom can't free up the pistons, their pump design is doomed. Golly! <sighs> All right, man. Cylinders are moving. We got a pump. Are we halfway there? We're past halfway there. All right. We were halfway there when we got when we found our components. <laughs> I'm a salesman, and this was a tough sell. These guys are uh, skeptical beyond uh, practical wisdom. But uh, watch what happens now. Pit crew Pitbull Scott has found a roll of metal that could make their boat go faster. Spread this sheet out. We're going to put a sheet right on top. Block tack it. It should make the hull more aerodynamic. I'm going to tack this side first, and then I'll cut the end over there. <laughs> Not everyone is so confident. All right, everybody knows how to swim, though, right? Yeah, no problem. You guys seem to be doing a lot of work on the actual hull itself. Yeah. We want to make sure that we stay afloat and we want to make sure, we don't want to make a fast <laughs> mm -hmm. ship, we want to make a good study ship. My concern is that you've spent so much time on yeah. buoyancy and not enough time on your pump. Yeah, we're going to go cracking on that full stream now. we got a lot of cutting to do still and some welding, but yeah. we're coming down to the wire, I'll, I'll tell you that. Over the other side, the three wise men have finally seen the light. Solid boat. They can now start making a head that will transform their Jeep engine into a firefighting pump. What's the difference between a geek and a nerd? A nerd, nerd's gonna stay home and not go to a party because like he's studying, and a geek uh, will go to the party, but everyone will give him a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you about to stick that on there? Well, I'm just kind of lining it up because these guys, I think, need the uh, the moral boost of seeing the of seeing engine, something turn seeing, around. seeing pieces come together. Yeah. So and it's just gonna be the train little... from the motorbike straight onto the, a sprocket on the crank here. They'll mount their pump, the converted Jeep engine, on the back of the paddle boat. They'll connect the sprocket of their pump to the sprocket of the motorbike engine with a chain. It's crucial that the two sprockets are perfectly aligned, otherwise the chain may fly off and then they'll be dead in the water. The Brainy Bunch get down to some high precision alignment. Dude, this thing is heavy. We want to set it right on this piece of metal. Come toward Kirk. Toward Kirk, toward Kirk. Hi. No. Which way? This way. It's, that's good. Uh, it's a little too far ahead, but... Maybe. Close enough. It's close. We need more chain. Well, we can move it closer. Yeah. Or we can move the that's bike back. It's an eighth of an inch out. You tell me if that's good enough. It's good enough. Is it? Yeah. Teams, it's time to put another log on the fire. You've got three hours remaining. Tell us when we got one. At last, Mike and the mechanics prepare their pump. Scott wants to use the front fan off this air conditioning unit for their spinning impeller. So some delicate engineering is called for. Are we doing anything? Is it moving? Doesn't seem like it. Uh, that's what I figured. The fan will become the impeller at the heart of their centrifugal pump. They'll house it in a metal case and attach the drive shaft directly to the sprocket of the bike. Finally, they'll fit the piping and hoses. But first, they've got to get the fan off. It's the first piece of their pump puzzle. The pit crew, are they, are they in the ballpark? Can they get it finished? They have a lot of parts here that they need to fabricate. They have a lot of parts that need to get turning. The pit crew has got a lot to do out there. If anyone looks like they've actually made some progress, I'd have to say it's the geeks. Well, the geeks have built a lot of parts. They are just cooking right along here. They've done their homework, and they are hoping this thing goes. Fair to say time is the worst enemy at this point. Time has been the worst enemy all day and continues to be. 
the eggheads and the meatheads get their heads down. Teams, the sun is low in the evening sky. Oh, and by the way, you have two hours left to build. Oh, no. The geeks are ready to piece together their complicated pump. You want to see if she'll fit? Oh, beauty. We want it with opposite strokes. Opposite strokes? Yeah, yeah put that to, over here. We want to syncopate that. But even bionic brain cubes is baffled. Okay. No, no, wait, wait, these are out of sync. How these, is that going to work? We want one pumping and the other one sucking at the same time. Inside each cylinder, it's the piston moving up and down, which causes the water to be sucked in and pumped out. But this won't give a continuous stream. So their plan is to connect the cylinders in pairs. When one of the pair is sucking, the other is pumping. This should produce a steady flow of water to fight the fire. Come on, guys. We really got to keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. Tyler. Yeah. What are you trying to do? I'm putting the fire out. <laughs> See, that's not going to work, is it? It's wild. Do you know why? No. Because you haven't got enough water. And but you haven't got enough pressure. It's a bit tragic, isn't it? What you need is you need a good steady flow and a good volume. OK. <laughs> Get it? Got it. <laughs> good. <laughs> I think we work better in the dark. We work like the vampires. The pit crew pump parts are piling up, but they're feeling the pressure. Teams, this is your one-hour time check. It is now officially time to panic. Ah! OK, guys, one hour. Could be worse, I guess. You've got less than an hour left. You've got to get this beast in there and mount yes. it. How long is that going to take? Yes. This shouldn't take us more than 15 minutes. There's quite a lot still to do to the pump, isn't there? You've got to get the housing on. You've got to get all the hosing mounted up. We're real close. we got the pieces cut. And we're How long? going like crazy. We got about 45 minutes. 45 minutes. We could. We're. It's coming it's out of the It's already looking a little bit dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So it's all hands to the pump. It's like building a house of cards. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Check that one. Their pump goes straight onto the sprocket of their bike. It's a direct approach, and there's no room for error. But under the pressure, they've made a brainless blunder. Yeah, see, I think we tack welded the wrong side. They've welded the pump bracket back to front, and it's going to cost them precious time. My team, the geeks, <laughs> actually have everything hooked up You're and looking good. You're being shamelessly partisan, aren't you, this time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Geek power. <laughs> what, are you trying to say that they're ahead of the... <laughs> <laughs> yes. And if the fan works... Oh, no, I mean, it's going to be an ugly event all round, isn't it? Yeah. Because, I mean, the chances of the pit cruise machine moving forward with any speed, oh, no. steering, floating even. Remember the uh, geeks were talking about karma, karma coming back to... To bite oh, you. you. This is karma that. coming back to bite them now. <laughs> but over with the geeks, it sounds like the only karma they need is a car mechanic. I don't think all four of those are supposed to be hanging down. We might have one carburetor that's not getting any fuel. One more mistake by Fiery Frank, and the pit crew's dreams are up in smoke. Okay, I'm gonna get the housing on it. Yeah. The spinning pump's almost home and dry. The geeks have fixed the fuel lines and give it one more go. Go, 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 let them down, let them down easy, let them down nice easy. Nice and easy. Don't, don't, don't let the thing take off because the pump's real close to the bedside. Watch out with my housing. This is your 15 minute time check. Let's swing it over, we're gonna we're swing going it over. Going. Which right, way? We're going Get that the housing way. away from the, from the wheel well. Just set it down, set it down, set it down, set it down. All right, good deal. Sweet. Paint me a picture of the race. The geeks are gonna have a bumpy ride all the way across. They have to keep this vessel afloat. It is sincerely overloaded. Their pump may well come apart. 
So many parts, many of them fail, to pump the structs. Mm -hmm. The pit crew has a concern, and their concern is going to be stability. They've got the power, but is this square little brick going to be able to stay dry side up and wet side down? Who is your money on? The pit crew has got a pump, which I'm going to put my money on. They're going to rev that thing up, they're going to literally shift gears, and you're going to see some water fly. Five minutes, put the finishing touches on right now. That'll work good in there. All right. Funky. One fire hose ready to squirt. Three, two, one, toes down. Yeah. All right, you fledgling firemen. Time to head back to the firehouse. I can't. It's all over. We'll do it all. Tomorrow. All right, guys, great job. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Shall we do your fire? Will the pit crew's hastily made pump, plundered motorbike, and heavyweight hull blaze a trail to the final or sink to the lake bottom? And will the geek's wildly elaborate pump, weedy chain drive, and wobbly paddle boat set the world on fire or sink without a trace? We've come to this picturesque location to raise a little hell in what promises to be a scorching battle of brains and brawn. It's time to see if our flamboyant fireboats can pass the final test. Under junkyard rules, the teams have one hour to ready their firefighting boats for action. Today's winning team will be the first to open their treasure chest in true Junkyard Wars style using a pair of bolt cutters. But of course it's not that simple because the bolt cutters are going to be inside a tool shed which is about to become a blazing inferno. To get to the fire the teams must race across the lake and around a buoy. It's then a straight run to the blazing buildings. Once moored up to another buoy at a safe distance from the flames they can fight the fire. When the flames are out, the teams race for the dock. It's a hundred yard dash to collect the bolt cutters from the smouldering debris. And finally, they race back to shore to open their treasure chest. Inside it is a flare. The first team to set it off will rock it through to the Junkyard Wars finals. We're going to call this Tony the Tiger. How's that? I don't think we have enough navigation facilities, so I brought along this GPS unit to keep track of our coordinates. It's a big lake out there. We could get lost. <laughs> Well, isn't this a nice day for a bit of wanton destruction? I think we're to ready. Drown. <laughs> to drown. Sure, so Chris has got an optimistic outlook <laughs> from Scott. Hey, we'll drown. <laughs> good day to die. We like you. We'll drown for anybody. <laughs> Have we christened it? I can't yes, remember. Yes, we had, we had called this. This is Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger. It's, 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 it's great. It's as sleek you know, and elegant great. and graceful as a tiger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is this going to float? Yes, How deep is the water? Float. If it's yeah. over this deep, probably not. After, after, after. <laughs> Thank you, scientists. At least for the first few minutes. <laughs> Are there any holes you're worried about, or is it just a matter of, is it just the weight? If, yeah. if you stay afloat to begin with, you'll stay afloat I, I, throughout. I think we're worried about this area right here, where, where, where our suction hose is at. And then who's going to be actually operating the, the hose? Exactly right here. Scott, Scott's going to be operating the hose. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to say, y'all be nice to me. <laughs> I will give you a bath. <laughs> and, the rest of, and the rest of us are going to be patterned to try to maintain the boat. I'm going to be yeah. yelling a lot, probably. Mike's going to be controlled. This is his baby right here, his the idea. But, I so mean, that, if, this is a matter of you're turning it on, and then you've got some control over the speed. Sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's about that. it, isn't that's, it? That's about I mean, it. If anything sure. goes wrong, if a bit flies off or something, there's, it's pretty that's much It's kind of welded shut, and there's yeah. not a lot of, we'll take it apart and fix it left. How confident are you about getting into that all-important Junkyard Wars final? We want this pit up pretty bad. I'm pretty sure we're going to blow them out the water. Who do you think is going to have the lead on... The first bit is the sort of race across water. Who's going to have the oh, advantage there? That will be or, us. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> so you think because this is just a bit more streamlined, you've got the edge here? A bit more. Even though you've... Probably, I hope you don't think it's rude to say slightly less muscle power for the paddling than yeah, we, we have, think no we have poles. Yeah, we think if it's if it's shallow enough, we're pulling across. You'll punt it, which is much more stylish. If this becomes yeah. an endurance uh, race, 
We've you reckon got you've it. got it? Yeah. So they might be beefier, but you've got the stamina. Absolutely. Wow. Now, in terms of then the phase two, which is actually putting the fire out. Ours will shoot 40 feet. Really? Yeah, we've 40 got... 40 feet with a good volume? Yeah. Yeah, tremendous. Tremendous amount of water if the chain stays on. Right. With two hoses, It too. all rests on that chain, yeah, doesn't do it? Have... Why does it keep coming off? Do you know? Well, we don't have the loose? proper alignment between the two sprockets. So it's falling off the same way each time. So what's the plan as to what to do about it? Well, we can put the chain back on at this point, and I think the best bet is to build some sort of some a tension, sort of guard some that... sort of a guide that, that helps put the chain back in position. Right. How's the rest of it looking, Thomas? If you can think for uh, a moment the rest about of it's the great. positive, is it? Yeah, this is just, I think, the only critical thing we missed. Really? The alignment on this. Uh, we just didn't pay enough attention. Yeah. And so we're paying for it right now. Oh. But we shall get it aligned. Manifold destiny and geeks. <laughs> Good I hope luck. This is not our destiny. But <laughs> <laughs> the ready machines await our judge's critical eye. Manifold destiny. I would call it hot lady. This is one sexy looking boat right it here. It is. It's hot. hot. This thing is hot. This I love thing it. is hot. The water will come in right through these hoses here. The piston is going to go down and it's going to suck water up through this pipe. When the piston comes back up again, it's going to force that water out and right out through these hoses. The things that you like about it? The boat is more hydrodynamic. It's going to go straighter through the water than our Ford truck box mm -hmm. is. All right, well, they call it uh, Tony the Tiger. What do we got here? Well, we do have an ugly duckling, and we have ourselves a recycled Ford truck bed. Mm -hmm. We have ourselves a recycled junkyard Honda motorcycle, and we have a centrifugal direct drive pump. Does it have enough bite? I like that direct drive pump. There's no change to come off. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it runs and runs and runs, hopefully. I got I to gotta be honest with you. This does not look like it's going to float. It may not. So, knowing what we know, who is your money on? Tyler, my money is still on the pit crew. They have a simple, effective design as opposed to the Geeks machine, which I believe uh, may have some mechanical problems along the way. Will the teams get that sinking feeling? First up, the Geeks. That is kind of easy. Counterbalance me. What do you guys think? She floats! No kidding! Now for the hefty hull of Tony the Tiger. Everybody get in their positions. Let's go. Let's All right, let's go. Well, it's floating, so we're done. Attention, my combustible crew! You will begin your firefighting expedition at the sound of the horn! And the two firefighting factions are off! We can do it, let's go. Don't break Just the paddles. Tyler, they're already doing better than I thought. The geeks haven't flipped over, and uh, pit crew still okay. float. Stein, pick it up a little bit. Keep going, keep her going. Pointed right for it. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's move it, man. You gotta paddle more, dude. Here comes the geeks, and they, they look great right now. We're just a little bit ahead. The geeks are first to take the turn at the boy, but only just. Now we gotta go put out the fire. We're going straight ahead here. Turn it. Come on, pit crew! There go the pyrotechnics. Yeah, give me a bigger paddle. Oh, keep going. Oh, God, it's on fire. Keep it going. Use your hands or something, Mike. That square bow on the pit crew's boat is definitely slowing down right now. We're just a little ahead of them. This is for the finals, guys. <laughs> Can you feel the heat? Oh, yeah. It's a hot yeah. one. Go, Geeks! Geeks have got an excellent lead here. And you know, response time with firefighting is half the battle. <laughs> exactly. You the, the fires are taking hold. The first team to start dousing will have the right, upper hand. Get ready to get this engine. The Don't geeks are in the lead. We got plenty of time. We got all the time in the world. Back, back off a little bit, Stein. Put some muscle in it. You're not going to let those little fellas be you. The geeks are mooring up. Give him the paddle, Frank. Give him. All right. The pit crew are closing in on their boy too. Go on this way. Kathy to Tyler. The geeks have got their engine running, and we should. There we go. There's the first spurt, and it's reaching the flames. And there's not a huge amount of volume, but it's obviously hard to control. Uh, it looks like the firefighters from the Keystone Cops <laughs> Division or something there. <laughs> There's not, more water on them than there is on the fire. I believe their pump is going to successfully sink their own bolt. 
The pit crew are finally moored and they're ready to start their pump. Oh, come on now. There's not a lot of sign of powered hosing at the moment. What's going on? We're just having a problem with the pump. We're just trying to get a little prime going here. That way the water... Well, you're not get... getting water coming in. Exactly. To prime it, they have to suck up water and get it in there in order for it to spin it off that impeller. So just to get it, get the ball rolling. You can't get it to circulate. The geeks are pumping water, but it's hardly touching the fire. The pit crew are puzzled by their pump's pathetic performance. Put a hold that sucker there if I had to. Once we get the primer going on the water, we'll be all set. But how long is that going to take? The fire's nearly out. I know. Nobody's home. <laughs> I think it's going to work, huh? They ain't getting out of that pump at all. She's holding, but we ain't getting it. Okay, it's like. The home is running hot. It's cooling off the radiator. It's getting a little hot. They ain't pumping a thing. I see all four of them looking pretty forlorn. I think the pit crew have adopted a very cunning strategy of just waiting for the fire to go out, which is actually working rather well for them. Ah! The tiny bit of water that is hitting the geek shed is making it burn more slowly. I'm pleased to report Keystone Cops activity on the other side now. The pump won't suck it, so they're using a bucket. I'll give you more slack is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm throwing the water from down here. Can I get it closer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah. Beautiful, baby. Beautiful. Clear the hose. It's totally jammed up with grass. What's going on here, geeks? We're jammed up. We got a salad shooter. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but the geeks have a problem. I can't get it out. Get me a, a the screwdriver. red duct tape? You got red duct tape there. Their complicated design is coming apart. No, no, come back, come back, Rhett. You're sinking the boat. And now their pump has no power. We might be full of water. I have my hand over the intakes trying to keep it dry, but... Uh, Where is the intake? Right, right there. Here. Hook up the bilge pump and let's get some water out here so we're light when we got to paddle. Nothing? It won't even start? Oh, it's no spark. We're, we're no out spark. of... We swamped our motor. Nope. Pump down. Oh, yeah! The pit crew's bucket is working wonders. Yeah. Come on, Frank! Yeah. We don't call him Frankie Wonderful for nothing. That's right. Look at him go, baby. The geeks have a bucket. Go, Thomas. They've copied the pit crew tactics, but the whiz kids are too wimpy. I can't reach it. <laughs> Why do the geeks have rat throwing the water? Make our rope longer. We ain't going to give up we now. We give up now. Nice. That's what you want to see right there. That's it. That's it. The grease monkeys are going bananas. Ooh. Come on. Right, right corner. Get that right where the can's at. You're almost there. Oh, come on. You're almost there. That's it. I think exhaustion is going to be the limiting factor here. And after this, of course, they've got to do some serious running and then paddle all the way back to base. Keep on going, Timmy. Keep on going. All right. Rope is long. Go okay. forward. Go forward. You got to help forward. me balance this Way thing forward, out. Rhett. The geeks have finally figured out how to move the boat so they can get closer to the fire. We're flooding over here. Careful. Careful. The geeks have taken a rather liberal interpretation of their mooring line. So they're actually moored about two and a half centimeters away from the fire. So they're finally making a little bit of an impact with their bucket. Switch up. Here, you want me to throw? You want me to throw? You guys got to be exhausted. We can't give it up now. Let's do it. Come on. Scott is just going mental with the bucket there throwing. There we go. Come on, one more. Come on. Go, Thomas! Nice. That's Keep it. Doing That's that. it. You That's got it. it. Oh, the geeks are really making some progress now. Whoa! You're doing great, Tom. Switch. The pit crew are, I would say, uh, probably 10 buckets away from putting their fire out completely. I can literally see one little children's birthday cake candle still burning. And it's gone! We got a flag to go! Let's go! Up time! There's our side! Oh, here they go, they're running. Come on, your side! Stay on your side, baby. I am! All right. I'm the pit crew are first off to the dock at the end of the peninsula. The geeks are nearly done, too. There's one last flame on that upright bid. Yes! And they're off! Come on, geese! The pit crew are looking tired. Come on, dig in there! Let's do it! Come on! The geeks' boat is faster, and they might catch up. We gotta go around where that front side's at! No, we're taking on water. The pit crew steering is a shambles. Bring me around, Jeff. Push it in there. 
push jig. Mike, go ahead. Paddle, paddle, paddle. Mike, paddle, paddle, Mike. We're just going in circles. Well, no, we go. Paddle, wheel. You feel your toes touch, Rhett. Jump off. Bring him around, Mike. Bring him around, Mike. Go, go. The pit crew are the first to dock. Bring it home to dad. Everybody stand still. The softies are on their tail. We have to go around the buoy, don't we? No. Now it's a race to collect the bolt cutters from the smoldering embers. Go, get go Rich! <laughs> he is flying. Look at Freddy's oh. flying. Tim's back to the boat first. Rhett is hot on his tail. Push us off, Spine. Go, go! Well, now it's a really tight race, Tyler, because the Geek's boat is faster, it's more streamlined, it's more maneuverable, and they are under motion. Nice and easy, everybody relax. You gotta make it. Paddle hard on your side, Frank. Okay, I got you. The big boys are feeling the pace. Stroke! Stroke! And the geek's superior stamina is showing. Straight ahead, into the wind now. Come on, everybody pull. Back off, back off. Go ahead, go ahead. Here, take the pit crew are looking very dodgy. Bring me around, bring me around, bring me around. I know you're tired. <laughs> Their boat is hanging so low in the water right now. They're going down, man. They are close to going down. Right, Frank, paddle away okay, from the boat. Running. There you go. We're making good progress now. Oh, it's close. So oh, they're very close. Good. This Come is a victory on, paddle. Come on, let's do it. There's two more strokes over there, guys. Get out, get out. Go. Go. Go ahead, Come on, buddy. Go ahead. The pit crew have landed. Go. The geeks have touched down, too. Go on, go on, go on. Come on, Stein, buddy. You can do it. Tyler, the bolt cutters are being deployed. Captain Tom musters his last ounce of strength. Come on, Stein. Yes. Try not to fit. Take it They're easy. They're in the box. Easy, easy. It's Scott yeah. who's first to fire the flare. Yeah. 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 The pit crew are the victors. <laughs> and the geeks are worthy opponents. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Woo. Uh. Woo -hoo. How do we do it? Yeah. How do we do it? A fantastic job on both sides. Unfortunately, we can only have one winner, so we have to give this to the team that comes in second. The Geeks! To the pit crew, you guys are going to the Junkyard Wars! Let's see who's who the best! for the Junkyard Wars Finals! We got them, take them out, push them out. In the Junkyard Wars Final, the pit crew are unleashed against power plant wizards, the turbines, in the ultimate clash of the combat cars. I can give you more slack, is what I'm saying. I'm going to board them from down here. Thank you, Jacob. Bring me around, bring me around, bring me around. 